Welcome to another episode of Demystifying Gay Porn. My name is Ike Grande, and if you watch gay porn, I've definitely helped to get off. Uh, joining me again for the third time, not in a row, but for the third time in the series, uh, he is a, a model, a porn star, an adult entertainer, a content creator. What else? What else can we possibly call you? Kink, kink master, Ooh, right? That's a new one. Uh, <laughs> a, a fetish fetish icon Ooh. i'd say and wow. um all these like <laughs> these positive things. and good old As alice grant how are you i'm so good so happy to be back um i keep getting messages from like people who listen to the show and like they bring up like the stories that we talked about mm. so I'm, I'm happy to be back yeah this is the third season this is the third season isn't that crazy Ooh. 60 62 episodes jesus um it's it's crazy it's a it's um a passion project still uh, nobody's picked it up. Um, then again, it's really hard to market, and I'm trying my best, and I'm doing a whole bunch of other stuff. So, um, little by little, it, it's out there. I mean, yeah, um, maybe twenty or thirty messages after we did the one about my my dirty client. Yeah. Oh my god. I was like, oh no. I want to. It wanna, was so funny. <laughs> I want to dive into more. <laughs> Let's go. Um. So. What's happened in the last year? God, the last time I saw you was almost around this time last year. Yeah, um, I think COVID had, like, we were just starting, like, recover-ish from COVID. And now we're back here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I feel like we're just reliving it. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, COVID kind of put, like, the fear of God into me. And, like, I was like, I'm not going outside. I was, like, wiping my bags with, like, mm -hmm. my groceries with, like, Clorox wipes while we still had them. And, like... I wasn't going out at all. I was just playing like Animal Crossing on my Switch. <laughs> it was, my, my apartment looked really scary because it's just three men laying on the floor with three cats, binge watching Real Housewives, playing Animal Crossing. Um, but yeah, um, I, everything changed. I went from like, I, I felt like I like, got my footing in porn mm -hmm. right before the pandemic hit. And like I was working in Europe and I was having a lot of fun meeting new people, talking to new studios. And then they're like, hey, get back home. Like, I was like, fuck. Yeah. And yeah. then it just, you know, like when you're on that track and you're like doing really well and you don't want to slow down because then you feel like you would just stop. That kind of happened. Mm. And I was like, I don't fucking want to do porn anymore. I'm like, so you've been. Um, since March. MIA. Okay. So since March. Since March, I haven't. Uh, um, the last scene I filmed was, am I allowed to say? Yeah, sure. Um, I, last scene I did was um, for Naked Sword. I did the Everybody um, film, which was great. How was that? Yeah. Um, it was possibly the most different porn I've ever done in my life. First um, first scene with Naked Sword? My first scene with Naked Sword, like, I've done, like, sister companies, like, for them, but, like, the sub companies. Um, it was my first time working for Naked Sword, mm -hmm. and um, it was supposed to be the most inclusive scene. And I think they did... They did great with casting. They um, they definitely got very different people. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it was received too well. Um, but what, what were you cast in? I was cast in as the for the bear scene. Mm -hmm. um, I think I was casted. I, the, the guy that I filmed with, my co-star, he wasn't a bear. But um, I feel like that's more of a you choose how to define yourself. Mm -hmm. he was, was an otter? He was like... Yeah, he was like a chunky otter. He was adorable. He was very nerdy, very cute, very my type. But um, he was new, brand new, never did porn before. Or if he did, he never like completed. Mm -hmm. So um, this was a very, very big undertaking. I remember applying for years to like naked really? sword and okay. never getting a response back. So like I was like, I'm not fucking up my my first time after applying so many times to... Were you uh, top or bottom for top. that team? Okay. I was the top. And, I mean, the shot was beautiful. Um, beautiful camera work. Um, the scene was great. It was just, you know, some bumps, especially mm -hmm. when you put a new person into a scene, especially at that caliber where they expect such... Were there uh, first-time jitters or first-time yeah. problems? And there, there, there was a lot of first-time <laughs> problems, but out of respect to the, my co-star, I mean, he was a sweetheart. Um, also, you're, when, you, when you do like a studio scene like that where it's like expected six to eight hours mm -hmm. and you're doing a whole bunch of B-roll and you have to do every position from every angle because they don't know what they want to use, and then you put someone new who's never even done like a, you know, Treasure Island is, is a good way of filming because it's 
there's usually one cameraman and it's a roving camera it's not stationary and it's kind of just like it's like real sex mm. and i think you should always do like a real sex scene first before going into storylines yeah so that way you you what you find out by doing real sex on camera you find out whether or not you can do porn because if you can't get hard or if you're nervous and you can't look, you look at the camera like you learn a lot from mm-hmm. those studios and then just to jump straight in to like naked sword where the, like they're expecting you know don't put your face turn this way yeah turn, yeah turn out like oh cheat out and all that stuff and like, like i mean yeah yeah I, I was actually while you were saying that we didn't i don't know if we did that enough actually i'm so sorry no don't worry about it i wasn't um, thinking oh because we just shot a suck scene for treasure island for it was super fun yeah gianluca and you um it was a good scene it was very it's very, big very passionate very big penis yeah very yeah big. very it big dick. <laughs> it curves down uh a little bit and um it was hits, very hits the right spot. It does. Right? I mean, I feel like if we did a sex scene, I would want to be on my back for most of it. But, um, yeah, digging down. Yeah, dig yeah. It, just <laughs> digging, bitch. Um, very passionate. I feel like you, you'd be a great lover. While you were talking about working for Naked Sword, um, I've come to, like, the shoots that we do, even though they're like 20 minutes, 25 minutes of shoot time, it's roving cameras awesome. But sometimes you really will miss something. Oh my you god! Gotta yes. be, you got to be no. able to do it. It's I, so my whole thing every time you're filming, I feel like I feel like so bad. I'm like shit. It, I'm I'm doing I'm I'm doing the wrong thing because you're standing there, and then all of a sudden, like he was hugging me, and then pushed, and I was like, oh no no no. Oh, don't worry. I'll follow. Like, I'll follow. Like, don't push that yeah. way because we're going into like the black zone where like the light's terrible, and then the camera can't see anything. There, yeah, there were definitely a couple of times, and I've had that happen with a lot of um, OnlyFan models, um, who who start doing porn. Uh, they need more direction, and well, I'm not used, so to used to. Do, to yeah, they're yeah, used yeah, to the yeah. stationary. The i um, the iPhones there. Yeah, and, like they they might not work to their iPhone, but they know it's there. So yeah. Like, it's going to get everything. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have to sometimes remember that because there are times, even new people where like I'm telling them, okay, well this is what we're going to do, blah, blah, blah. And you can see the deer in the headlights look because they don't know what you're talking about. I don't miss production. I don't miss being on the team. Cause I feel like that'd be a shit show right now because everybody does porn. Everybody has only fans and that's not like a read. I think it's amazing. Um, our community is not being so judgy anymore mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. people are like, this is a legit business and I love that. But I feel like if I was, if I was being a production assistant again, I'd be like, Hey, you know, just open your hip. Open. Yeah. Just like it's, it's, you're right. Everybody does do porn. No, it's very, people who judge the shit out of us in the beginning like they're <laughs> on only fans and yeah. now and i'm like oh yeah. so lame everybody does porn but it's also not everybody has to do porn and i think that it's it's one of those things where now kids because i've met some people that are like in their 20s like literally 19 20 mm-hmm. and they'll oh i'm thinking about starting a page and i'm like okay well you're thinking about starting a page do you know what like have you thought about everything that goes into it yeah. um and then like within a month they drop out so I don't think everybody has to do it. Especially like if they're that young and they're like, they have future goals that are outside of porn. Like I'm applying to a job soon and I have to scrub my social media, my personal social media, not my work one, because that's a totally different name. Yeah. Um, everything's disconnected from who I am outside of porn. I was like, shit, I have to scrub my, my fucking Instagram and like get rid of all this stuff because mm. they want my social media. Oh, they do. They want to know my social media because they might want me to like use my social media to promote and stuff like that. Oh, but um, okay. Equinox. Oh, okay. Fingers crossed. Yeah, but fingers yeah, crossed. Anyway, um, but yeah, this I'm scared for them because like a lot of jobs want to see your social media and they mm-hmm. do like background mm-hmm. checks and they see that. Background so. checks and if you have an incendiary tweet from 10 years ago i don't good do luck anything bad no, well good i My, mean <laughs> i never so like i always see like all these porn stars and they're friends of mine i love them to death but they always get in twitter fights and i was like it's not that hard not yeah. to do it i was like literally just you know no one watched bambi growing up yeah. like if you don't have nothing nice to say don't say nothing at all like that's like the first lesson you learn in being yeah. a person i think yeah. <laughs> you know I, like, I, you I, learn I, that in kindergarten i have <laughs> never gotten into a twitter fight i am Am I, am I lying? No, I've never gone. I never instigated one mm-hmm. or participated in one. 
Like if someone said something negative to me, I was like, does that make you feel happy? Mm. What was the goal? <laughs> like, what was the goal you were trying to get by saying this? Yeah. Okay. All right. Have a good day. Cause you're just a bot. And then I can't do it. I stay away from looking at anything. Uh, a lot of times that people write, even on the podcast, uh, I don't care what they say about the porn. I don't care. Cause everybody yeah. has a different taste, everything, yeah. whatever you like. We, okay. Watch it. I have no problem with it. But when it gets to, oh, well, your voice this or your voice that or this person or that. Like, when it gets too personal, I'm like, all right, oh, this yeah. is your problem. It's not my problem. I was like, you're the reason why gay people fucking suck most of the time. Is yeah. Because you're, like, <laughs> attacking their voice. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there was a couple of things I wanted to talk to you about. Okay. Um, first of all, are you still taking clients? Um, so... I recently opened Rent Men when I was in Detroit. I did a live show for Menjo's, and I was like, let me just see what's going on. Because I, so when Rent Men, when COVID hit, Rent Men gave everybody the option to freeze their account, and I froze it, and I just reopened it now. And I was like, oh God, <laughs> bombardment. <laughs> um, I want to go back into it. Um, I think I need to update my pictures, because mm. now it's been a year, and I do not look the same. And I don't want to get, you know, those negative, um, reviews the stars like, the yeah, Yelp like he does not the right like Yelp pictures. reviews <laughs> I was like I've, I've lost um, I've lost maybe like 30 or 40 pounds of like muscle and fat so I, I don't look exactly how I look in those pictures anymore so you look good thank you yeah. I'm trying I'm trying to get back on track it's just being healthy is expensive yeah. being unhealthy is so much cheaper hey, well welcome to America <laughs> I know right <laughs> I, mean, I was um when I was escorting and doing porn and my OnlyFans was like in the top tier and I was doing really well, I was like, fuck yeah, we'll eat, you know, healthy chicken breasts every day and like free was, range like, organic. Yeah, like we were doing like everything healthy. Our bodies were amazing. Like our doctors were so proud of us. And then <laughs> the pandemic hit and it's like either Checkers, Burger King, McDonald's, then Chinese food and then always Taco Tuesday. And I'm like, my liver's gonna, <laughs> it's like I'm gonna die. But, um, <laughs> Yeah. Um, I want to go back to escorting. Um, I'm getting more comfortable with uh, meeting with s people who are strangers. Mm -hmm. um, I just don't want to give them a bad experience. And I don't know if I'm good at the whole um, creating the fantasy anymore. Like, I don't want to take a client and then not give them what they asked. Mm -hmm. Like, I want to deliver the full thing. Like, so if I was doing boyfriend experience, I want to be able to hold this person and, you know, remember everything they tell me and, you know rub their feet and you know put them through the whole motion mm -hmm. or if it was a fetish person i want to be able to you know become dominant and it's it's a lot of like it's a lot of acting but it's also a lot of like getting into that okay. character and like so walk me through when you do clients that are i've heard one of the hardest one is the boyfriend experience it is because it's really emotional um i actually lost my um I had a really good client in Paris. Um, he would fly me out there every other month. Um, his wife knew about me. Um, it was really intense because I knew about his children. Like, I would, you know, out of actual real concern, I would ask him, like, you know, how is your daughter doing? Oh, something happened with her in school, or he missed a, one of her soccer games or f football games. And um, his son is, like, acting up. And, like, I, had to, I knew everything about his life. Mm -hmm. And he mm -hmm. knew bits and pieces of mine just enough to where it felt like we were on equal footing but um it's really personal and like it's i had to advise like my my porn son to actually cut one of his regular clients off from the boyfriend experience because he got crazy and he didn't cut him off and then he ended up stealing money from his um paypal account because they got way too wow they had a joint paypal account i have no idea how it happened but money was taken out of his account and um, the guy was absolutely creepy. So you have to understand where, like, you are being paid an allowance to be this person's, you know, boyfriend experience. Mm -hmm. And, um, but you still need to be yourself outside of the experience. Yeah. So that's, a, it's, it's overwhelming. It can be. So you shouldn't have more than, like, three or four boyfriend experience clients that are long-term. Because then they get developed. Cra like, he ended up marrying... Um, the escort that came after me they're together now he's some escort from copenhagen um and now they're together it's just um it's a very intense experience mm -hmm. um you also have to set a lot of boundaries like um he would always book us a room that was shared together and i would never get to sleep in the beginning i was like i need to sleep <laughs> And he would try to like fuck me while I'm sleeping. I'm wow. like, get the fuck okay. off me. <laughs> like, no. 
So I'm going to set boundaries. Always get your own room. Quick check. Okay. I always get nervous. No. I have right. nobody behind us. Yeah. To like make sure everything's going right. I filmed. I filmed a whole. Um, I filmed the scene with Stevie Tricks. Mm. We filmed the whole scene. Nothing recorded. It was supposed to be my breakout scene, my first scene with an FTM model. Like we were friends for a long time, but um, my first time ever filming with an FTM model, and none of it, none of the content. That I sucks. Was, I was so angry because yeah. it was like a real moment, like real moment, like no need for Viagra. Mm-hmm. Um, my first time having to have sex with someone that I didn't need to use loop. It was fucking amazing. Um, it was a great, great scene. I'm so angry that like we have none of that footage. Yeah. Just remember, everyone, if you're shooting OnlyFans videos or any kind of content, <laughs> always check for the record button. Yes. Un- like, take a break. Don't, yeah. don't get into it. Like, you <laughs> remember, it's work. <laughs> always check your camera angle just in case, too. Uh, I did an interview with Romeo, Romeo Davis. I don't know if you saw that. I love Romeo. Yeah. It was a great interview. And I had interviewed Drew Dixon right before. And uh, I set up the camera and the camera slowly started falling. I got new equipment now that doesn't yeah. do that. But Very it slowly equipment. started. Fa- Thank you. <laughs> I feel it's like you step your game up with your equipment every time I see you. Like, you had those really good, like, stationary lights one of those times when we were in, like, 23rd, like, on by Herald Square. And then I was like, oh, my God, the lights are getting so much better. Yeah, I, I still have one. I always throw up a softbox. I always think that that's cool. Um, the accent lighting I use for here. I can't use it for work. Uh, <sighs> but other than that, uh, yeah, these guys, I think um, um, Alessio Vega uses the the thing that's holding up the iPhone for um, um, the for game shooting. Game. Well, yeah, this this whole setup right here. Um, so I saw him using it, and I was like, oh, that that's very, very smart, especially for an iPhone. You don't have to put your flashlight or the, mm-hmm. the light that's on there because I think it's a bit too jarring. This one you can turn down. Um, yeah, so it seems to work really well, except you know what I noticed? I've been shooting a couple of things with the iPhone, and when you shoot, and if you move too quick on the video, it changes colors. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't. It doesn't adjust quick enough. Yeah. So I'm hoping that the upgrade will will change that. Yeah, I know. Because I, I I do like shooting with the iPhone. I, depending. I, for OnlyFans, yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, the first time a director did that, I it was years ago. The camera quality was not good enough. Mm-hmm. But um, he did that. And I was like, hold the fuck up. You're expecting the highest level out of me, and you're just throwing an iPhone on the floor. And it's like get the undershot. I was yeah. like, get on the floor. When I was when I was doing produ- when I was being the second cameraman, I had to get my ass on the floor and like film from underneath mm-hmm. and like get the mm-hmm. cum onto my face. Like yeah. get on the Some floor. Battle scars, yeah. No, but now I think, I think it's actually probably smarter to use iPhones than going through like a DSL, like all those other high mm-hmm. expensive cameras, like. Well, DSLRs are great. They have they they give you a completely different quality of 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 shoot. The thing is is. DSLRs look good set on, and we're going to get really technical and nerdy, but don't worry. They, they're really sorry, good. Sorry, sorry, sorry. 23.97, right? So a lower frame rate, and it gives it that, like, filmic look. It's gorgeous. Yeah. The reason why, and I, I don't know a lot of, if a lot of people, um, a lot of gay porn companies use it, but 60p, mm-hmm. the less frames you drop, the better it is for, especially if you have a studio that doesn't take pictures or anything. You if you, a- yeah, if you do 60p, you're not losing that many frames, and it's quick. Um, it's just I don't know how websites adapt to 60p. I always suggested that we that we do our we take our stills from our shoots so that way we don't make because like when we were working in Vegas we would wear out the models because mm-hmm. they would do the f- they would map out they would map out the scene by doing the stills first so you have to have your erection you you have to you're pretty much having sex without having sex you have to have the full erection the whole time and then you have to go into the scene and start it over and it's like the models forgot how we mapped out the scene. They were already exhausted because we did so many photos. And then afterwards, after you do the shoot and the model didn't come, and then you'd have to do even more photos because the models did stuff that were not, that was not mapped out on the photos mm-hmm. in the scene. So then you have to get those photos. I was like, it's too much. I was like, you're paying them $300 for this. Scene. Yeah. I, I think, um, photos are great. I don't think they need to be that much, especially because no one if you, to if you anyway. put on a picture, if you put a picture up on Twitter, you're guaranteed not to get that many likes. I mean, maybe one teaser would be cool, yeah. especially if it's people that haven't worked together, a new person, um, somebody that's very popular. But even still, 
I find gifts work. Yeah, much better. And of course, but like if video. I s- so for me when I when I see a, a video that I want to jerk off to, it has to be like that action. Like not um, I don't know how to explain it. It's that scene that's like amazing. Like it's that one part of that scene that's like so stand out, mm-hmm. and that's like the perfect advertisement moment. Like it's not a single photo. It's like yeah, it's like oh, I was like sometimes even those corny ass um, the corny gifts where it's like they're acting. It's like <gasps> and it's like too much. I'm like <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. I was like that guy's cute. I'm gonna yeah, watch it. Okay, like uh, you, I know what you're talking about. The, like the little advertisement one. Yeah, I was like they oh pop God. up and. I was yeah, like, everybody. Yeah, perfect. I was like, those are the per- they chose the perfect moment. Yeah. To film. Usually, I don't know. Do you edit when you do your OnlyFans? I'm really bad. Okay. I mean, I do. I I try my best. It's just I don't like watching myself have sex. Mm-hmm. I'll okay. tell you a trick. I don't know if you do this, or I don't know how how what people. What do you use? I use Premiere. Okay. Um, I started out in Final Cut, and one of the things that I find over the past maybe six or seven years that I've been doing. Uh, especially when you're working for when I, this is back in RFC days, but it was a small post production, and by small I mean just me. And if you have to get shit done after, at a certain point, you have to know how to kind of maximize your time. So while I'm editing the scene, I'm already taking the best parts of it, mm-hmm. putting it on top, and taking my trailer. And eventually, you you might have two minutes, but your trailer is going to be a minute. You cut all the best parts down to a minute. And then you continue doing uh, your, the rest of your when stuff. You were, when I filmed with you when you were still doing um, Rafa Club, I remember like the scene turnouts were so quick. I was like, yeah. I was like, oh, I was like, we filmed that a month ago. Yeah, the, well, the bank is not deep when it comes to that. They have um, like eight videos in the can. They, pr- um, they push a lot out a lot. Yeah, and you know what? I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. I think I like it, it keeps the material fresh. And it'll come out within a month. And the model <laughs> still looks the same. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, no <laughs> shade. Know. No shade to Treasure Island. I know. <laughs> I filmed a scene with them when I first first started with Brian Bonds and Kenny out in um, San Francisco. Mm-hmm. I had hair. Um, <laughs> I had hair on my head. I had thicker eyebrows. I was also maybe ten pounds heavier with muscle, but like I looked healthy. And then they released it like three years later. Yeah, yeah. I had no hair on my head. My eyebrows were fucked. I, I'd started using Botox. Um, <laughs> I haven't seen Brian Bonds in like two years. I haven't seen him since his break, since everything happened in Vegas. And then I'm just like, <laughs> it's like, wow, that was three, there was a three year hold on that video. Yeah. Um, but I also did, th- I did like two or three videos of Brian Bonds for Treasure Island. So that made more sense. They just kept pushing it back. It's very well put together. They have a lot of content. Yeah, they're the way it's run is very well. That's all I can say. Well, it's you guys, just, you guys are like a global company, though. It's yeah, like it's great. They you, just you film in London, you film in San Francisco. New there's York. a South African. Um, are you fucking serious? Yeah, there's a shooter in South Africa. I just found out. I want to go to South Africa. Yeah, Treasure Tim, Island. Tim South Africa. I forgot what they called it. They called it, and I, and I was like, wait, what? I didn't hear about this. Fly me out. I will do <laughs> ten scenes. You'll make your money off me. I want to go to South Africa. Yeah, that would be a my, cool shoot. I have all my vaccines and I have my passport. Oh, there you go. And you can fly then. Yeah. Um, so really quick, just to get back to a couple, I, I want to ask you a little more about escorting only because um, when somebody contacts you and they have a specific thing that they want to do, do you get I do all research. the info? I was going to say. I So um, early on when I first started, I was um, very naive mm-hmm. and I, um, I would just go to an address that someone sent me. But um when someone gives me like a full script, like, I mean, when, oh, not that I don't appreciate it because I do, I appreciate you knowing what you want so I can deliver what you want. But when it's like strict, like, and we, we attempt to do it and then it doesn't work, we can't go off script. Mm. And I'm like, well, it's not working. But um, no, t- I tend to do a lot of research before time. Like, um, like if someone has a favorite sports team and they want to have like that bro that broy boyfriend experience where like, they want to watch their favorite football team and they want to like have snacks and like chill and watch football. I don't want to sound like an idiot. So mm-hmm. I have to, I, I mean, I played football in high school, but like playing football in high school is different than watching the NFL. So I had to learn about his favorite team and like figure out certain stats just to make sure I don't sound like an idiot. Cause I'm like, I, last time I watched football for fun was early two thousands. Like, I mean, I, I'll go to a game, but mm-hmm. like, you know, so I do a lot of research. I feel like it's it's 
especially if someone's paying that much money for your time. Because an over a boyfriend experience is tend to be overnight, mm-hmm. and overnights are a little pricey. Yeah. Um, if they're spending that much money, they deserve. They deserve the research. They deserve the effort. Yeah. And um, yeah, no, I mean. Did you wear a jersey? Yeah, you did. I wore a jersey, and then I realized I didn't need to wear a jersey. <laughs> Um. He, yeah, it was fun. Um, but well, you tried though. That was no. Nice. I, I no. I did. I tried. Yeah. Like um, an ex of mine works for um, City Field, mm-hmm. and like I didn't even know he was into sports. <laughs> but like I had, he gave me um a special card with like, I forgot how much money's on it, but it's you give it to you give it to people randomly. So I used it and I bought a couple like Mets jersey, like you know everything I needed, hats, jerseys, stuff like that. Um, I did a couple of baseball games and, you know, thanks for friends in like yeah. good places that don't yeah. mind helping you and supporting you. Um, thanks, Evan. I'm going to tell you a story of an escort that I knew. Uh, it doesn't escort anymore. But Do I know them? I don't think so. This is like 2010. Okay. Um, and he was German. Oh. And he had a... Oh, you may know him then. Yeah. <laughs> Um, he had a client that was Jewish. Oy. Oy Oy vey. Vey. Oy and the client that was Jewish liked no. him to dress up in an SS uniform. No. Yes. Did he do it? Yeah. He did it. Probably a little more prouder than he should have been. But he did it and he got paid. Don't worry. He did it and he got paid well. But, you know, that was that guy's fetish. And I, I can't think of anybody better to do it. Than that one, yeah, but because um, um, he's in a, the one that we're talking about in real life, he's um, has something to do with acting now, currently. No, okay, no, okay. no, no. Oh, thank God, it that's a different that story. Um, <laughs> no, I so I don't do race play. I also it's a very hard stop. I don't do race play, and I don't do anything that causes me to bleed. Um, I definitely would not be doing anything. <laughs> Well, when I mean Nazis, but um, yeah, I know what. Basically, what I want to know, I, I I already got a very outrageous story from you last season uh, that everybody loved. Uh, and did you get contacted from people I that did, were interested I mean, in it too? They weren't interested in the act itself, uh, or they were just talking about like they can't believe I did it. That it's cool that I wasn't making someone feel gross, or you know putting someone down for mm-hmm. what they enjoyed and I was willing to actually go through, go the extra mile and do the thing that made them happy. Um, I just had a lot of people, people really liked that, that episode. Um, maybe like 20 or 30 messages about that particular episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They were just, um, they were like, no one ever talks about stuff like that. Especially since, I mean, the person I just filmed with just agreed. Like it's one of the number one things that people ask for, mm-hmm. <laughs> which is, I still find very shocking, but um, it is. It's very common, and no one talks about it on podcasts. No one talks about it on TV or social media, and people are very ashamed. Very ashamed. I mean, I, I have one client in Philly that's still there, and like, he hit me up, but I haven't been on, I haven't been on anything. I've been really good. I haven't been on Scruff Grinder or rent men or well you're pretty busy nowadays aren't oh, yeah, you no, I'm, I'm well let's let's now that you mentioned that let's talk a little bit about uh the only fan situation because oh uh, so it's all, still there it's new and um i don't know what they're planning on doing um only fans so i don't want to do for my fans it's just the platform isn't i tried to do it and it wasn't i I was like lost. It was mm. like, you know, if my father or my mother was trying to use TikTok, it's like my parents are in their 70s. Seeing well, them on TikTok would be ridiculous. It's it's run by a company or the person, the company that started uh, the script for it is very confusing. I'm so confused by it. So, yeah, it's, and I, they don't offer that much help, so you kind of have to... I tried looking up tutorials. I yeah, couldn't find anything. Yeah. Um, and just for fans, I'm not allowed on oh you're not yeah no i don't well i think i had a disagreement with the owner and i was like sorry with my content but i did it so i did it quietly like i didn't shame him and i didn't like attack him on social media or anything i just i prefer my method of like you know removing myself from a situation is removing myself from a situation and no one needs to know about Mm -hmm. it so i guess some drama was happening and it doesn't align with my 
it doesn't align with who I am as a person. So I removed all my content mm-hmm. without making a big stink. And then he like messaged me about it. And I was like, I just want to remove my content. And that's that. Um, you didn't address the thing that happened. And I'm uncomfortable. And I guess he blocked me. Because I tried to remake my account when <laughs> OnlyFans went down. I was like, oh, let me just sign back in. Damn. I couldn't sign back in. I was like, oh, it's probably because, you know, I need to create a new username and password. I tried doing that. And it's like, file not found. And I was like, wow. Ooh. I was like, petty bitch. But I don't, I don't like him. In, I don't like him as a person outside of porn. And so I'm still happy he's not making money off me. I was in like the top, you know, pretty top percent in OnlyFans mm-hmm. for a while before COVID. And thank you guys for supporting me through COVID, even though I wasn't posting as frequently. You guys kept me afloat and you saved my life. And I understand why everyone left when, when they made that announcement yeah. on OnlyFans. I, I think um, eventually what, because a lot of things were speculated. and I'm so nervous. Yeah, well, I feel like there was a revisionist way of going about it. Because before that announcement was made... There were ads and there were things that were like, oh, um, musicians and, and artists. And, and, and personal yeah, trainers. And, I was like, chefs. and it was like, uh, not really. It no was one. <laughs> 98% or 99% of their content creators are porn. Yeah. And um, ridiculous. I think if they did want to go that route, they could have just started a, you know, OnlyFans Presents something. Because OnlyFans well, is not a good name anyway. In my opinion, OnlyFans and, and the people that are on it, they don't really have fans before they get on it. So, it's, it's the okay, weirdest that's, thing ever. That, that's how it was explained to me. That's why I was late to OnlyFans was because um, I started. Do, I already had a career in porn, um, and I didn't start on OnlyFans until I think I waited till I had like thirty thousand or forty thousand fans on Twitter, and I was like, you know what? Um, even if five percent of these people subscribe, that'd be enough. Mm-hmm. I'll be happy. I won't be greedy, and I'll be okay. And then when I hit, I, I so I started around like thirty, forty thousand fans on I mean followers on Twitter and then I was like I'll do it I'm stupid I should have just started OnlyFans from the beginning from the, okay. I shouldn't have waited I mean I already had a fan base mm-hmm. before I had Twitter because I was I was already doing porn I was I started doing Twitter because of porn they're like you need a market mm-hmm. and I was like okay but I was already nominated for an award before I had Twitter so I was like I should have fucking just did OnlyFans oh, and, yeah. and just had it from the beginning and had like all the old rules and stuff like that but you're right a lot of people start only fans and they're still a fan like yeah i mean i'm still a fan i still i still pay for people's only fans i support my friends yeah that's always nice yeah. like i mean usually what ends up happening is they're like oh i didn't know you were subscribing to me so let me give you you know you know free whatever and i'm like you don't have to i'm paying mm-hmm. for your content because your content's good and i want to watch it and plus and the money makes itself come back mm-hmm. It's like a really cute couple in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I'm never going to go there because it's too fucking far. But <laughs> it's a beautiful place, though. It's beautiful, Absolutely but beautiful. I'm never going there. You know that. Already. I can't. I can't yeah. do it. Okay. I mean, I want I want to film with them, but I'll probably have to meet them halfway. They're gorgeous. Yeah? You're going to tell me their names later. Prince, Dami, and Josh. Prince, Prince Dami, and Josh? Yeah. Okay. They're so cute. They're adorable. They're like this, um, this bear boy couple. Mm-hmm. And like, they're adorable. And they're so cute. And they do like really cute TikToks. Real, okay, yeah, that's another thing we haven't even tackled. I yet. need to learn. Yeah. I need to. I need like some little like nineteen twenty year old yeah, to teach that's me. That's exactly what you need. I was like, <laughs> teach me how to do this, because um, I tried. I'm like, wait a minute, I'm like trying to do like the dance. I'm like, no. I actually just spoke to Derek Klein, mm-hmm. and Derek was uh, he gave me like a little bit of a quick tutorial on. Well, this is what you have to do. Eventually, apparently, once you get out of the algorithm of um, For You or something. The For You page? For You page. You start your, you can see that there's absolutely more than just people looking for attention. The only thing I want to learn is how to bypass um, the NSFW aspect. Because I've seen some oh, yeah. TikToks. No, like, but oh. now, so what happens is, is for those not so good for work, um, if they get reported a lot and there's a lot of violations, when you go to follow them, it tells you like this person has been vi- has violated a lot of has, been, has done has a lot of violations. Do you still want to follow? I'm like, it's like wow. You also can't send messages on there. Like if they monitor your messages, like a friend mm-hmm. of mine said, like I'm gonna beat your ass, and like it got actually wasn't able a to private message. Yeah, I don't know why people would want to do that then if they're in your private messages. 
They, that's weird. Well, certain words, you're not allowed to use certain words. Okay, so trigger certain, certain words. So will, that's why they word things so odd on TikTok. Like, they say, like, undead instead of, like, kill yourself or suicide. Like, this person's oh. going to undead themselves, like, un- unalive themselves. That's what they say. I'm like, Jesus, okay. I'm like, God, I hate how kids talk. But then I'm yeah. like, now I realize it's because they're trying to bypass <laughs> TikTok. Oh, I mean, man. I love it. I think it's great. I've also, I mean, this is, uh, I feel very ashamed of this. I've learned a lot from TikTok. Like I've, I've like I've seen a video like of some scientist explaining something. I'm like, okay, I have to go research this because this doesn't make any sense. And then you actually find articles that are peer-reviewed articles. Mm. These and I'm like, okay, so the person wasn't lying; and they're telling the truth. So there's some really good knowledge being spread on yeah. TikTok, and also really good recipes. I think I've cooked every dish, all well, those stupid feta dishes with tomatoes. <laughs> Sorry, this is going into a really bad direction. <laughs> it's okay. Let's go back to porn. Don't worry, we'll take it back to porn right now. Um, I want to, um, what's the, what's the dirtiest thing you've ever done? Besides shit on someone's chest. Besides shit on someone's uh. chest. <laughs> I don't know. Um, that you would relate. I feel like we should have, you're, are you a drinker? Do you drink? I love drinking. Actually, my boyfriend got me a ninja last night and I was making frozen margaritas Ooh. with um, dragon fruit. It was mm. amazing. Fresh oh my God. Dragon fruit. fruit. Oh, that sounds delicious. We got really fucked up. Oh my God. I want a margarita tonight. Yeah. But now, don't think you're getting away from my question. <laughs> oh, the dirtiest thing I've ever <laughs> the done. The dirtiest thing you've um, ever done that you're willing that you're willing to. Oh, I am, I'm open. To I, I yeah. didn't tell anything. I kind of figured. Um, besides shitting on someone's chest on purpose because they asked me to. Um, I don't know. I don't know what's dirty because like after being in porn for so long, everything feels like so. Oh, so then, what's I've done fetish? Like I've done like you know guys trying to put cigars out on me or. How does know, that feel? Not fun. I have scars. Um, and you were okay. Did you get extra? Did you get paid? Oh extra yeah, I got, for it? I got okay. paid extra for it. I mean, I didn't know they were going to do it, but um, it happened. Um, and then you know they like start. They were very apologetic afterwards, and they paid me extra. Uh, but yeah, you know. And scars. what is a cigar bo- burn worth? Do you mind? I'm sorry. I don't mean to. I just. Um, I feel like you should have gotten compensated well. Can you just say you got compensated so like, well? I got. I got compensated. Decent. Okay. I mean, I've been definitely compensated more for less um, from just like someone hitting me too hard on the face. I've been compensated double what that person paid for me. But um, so I've, you've gotten slapped. Oh yeah, I've I've had um, you know that might be easier. Why don't we run through some stuff that people have done to you or you've yeah. done to people? Yeah. So um, one guy wanted me to be. I I'm I'm naturally submissive mm. in in my real life. Um, so when this guy asked me to be his sub. For a cl- as a client, um, was, he was my client. He asked me to be a sub. He was very dominant, um, but he, he took it to a point where it's not dumb; it's abusive. And he paid me very handsomely. And I, I don't think I worked for a good while after that. I was like, I want to work. I'm good. I'm financially stable. Okay. And I was like, fuck, for being financially stable for a few months is not <laughs> being financially stable. Mm. So I had to readjust my budget and go back to work, but. Yeah, clients tend to make mistakes. There are people. Um, I had one guy who I have a strict rule of no drugs. I mean, you can smoke weed and you can drink, but like no hardcore drugs. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had one client who broke the rule and he was slamming in the bathroom. He kept going to the bathroom and kept slamming. And um, I was like, I'm not doing this anymore because like I was worried that he was going to die. Yeah. And I'm like... I don't want my semen to be the last thing in your body when they discover your body. So oh, I'm not, yeah. I'm not doing, especially since he's, he's on the, um, he's on the Tony board. Like he's one of the person who like, he helps decide who wins a fucking Tony. And like, this guy's just slamming math. Um, <laughs> and like, that's why my fucking, the girl that didn't win, she played Karen for Mean Girls and like, she didn't even get nominated. I was so mad. It was so, no, this, was is, this is, of, is probably why. Piece of shit bitch. <laughs> um, yeah, they all fucking do math. Um, but yeah, I don't want, this guy's rich. He has a beautiful apartment. He owns a beautiful apartment. He has kids and a wife and he's on the Tony board and if my cum is the last thing found inside his body, they're going to be looking for me. Mm. So I was like, I'm good. Yeah. I'm not dealing with this. Then he starts calling Brian Knight as his, Brian Knight, I think, replaced me for okay. a little bit. And then I think he got a couple of other people after me. I don't, I don't think anybody lasts long. But yeah. And that, so, was not, that was after careful vetting, mind you. Like, sometimes it takes a good, like, weeks to a month for me to meet a client that requires Careful vetting on their end, right? Um, yeah, I vet them. Oh, like, so you vet them. Okay. So, like, I, 
you know, I have my reverse phone search. I search up their phone numbers. Um, I search up the address they send me, see, like, stuff like that. And then I ask them a lot of questions. And then I try to send trick questions, like, trick them up to be like, okay, well, if it doesn't match up. You do know. you do that for your safety? I do it for my safety and also because it's a waste of fucking time and money. Like, I had one guy make meet him at an address that it did exist, but the apartment number didn't exist in the building. And then he blocked me on WhatsApp. Also, I don't, I don't, I don't do WhatsApp unless you're in Europe. Um, but yeah, blocked me on WhatsApp, and then I called him from someone else's phone, and then kept going through it. And I just, I yeah, it was really annoying. And I do that for my safety and to protect my time and my money, mm -hmm. because I'm also taking time away from my boyfriends and my cats and mm -hmm. my family, and it's not worth it. Yeah. No, but yeah, I do. I vet heavy. Like the client that I had in Paris, I two months, three months, I didn't need him. I was just talking to him every once in a while, finding out information, making sure he wasn't crazy, because I'm going to fly to Europe and be with him yeah. alone for a you week. end up in a basement somewhere for four years. Yeah, no, I was like, I was charging a lot of money. I made him also send me half the money I was charging him before I got there, just in case something did happen to me. But like, I was like, bitch, well, like, I'm not going to go to fucking Paris and then get stolen. I watch Werewolf in, Werewolf in Paris. I see what that shit happened. I'm good. Do you have any clients or did you have any clients where you signed an NDA and then you were like, oh, fuck. I don't know if we've, I mean, we've discussed it a little bit, but do you have any of those or did you have any of those? I did have some very, um, I did sign some paperwork sometimes, but then there are other... I can talk about other people. Mm. So there are other people... <laughs> you can talk about... Um, there are people who I know who signed NDAs that shouldn't have signed NDAs because they could have helped the American government. Yes. I love you guys, and I understand why you didn't come forward and why you didn't violate your NDAs. My NDAs are superficial, and these people do not affect society. Mm. And I mean, they do, but not... not they're not it's like fashion industry. Yeah, like they're not. They're nothing. You know, in in five years, no one's gonna give a shit who the fuck they are. Mm. And they have no impact on politics. But you know who you are. You should have come forward. Mm. I love you guys. Do you have any that? If we knew, people would be like, "Oh wow, I didn't know." Yeah, yeah. yeah. You'll be like, "Oh, makes sense." You'll be like, "Oh, yeah." Wow. What do those experiences tend to be like? Um. Since, uh, since I was raised as I was raised very weird I never had like idols or anybody to look up to I never like stand anybody or like had like oh my god yeah like a fangirl moment so when I meet people I grew up in New York so when they're filming most of the time like if they're filming something in my neighborhood and there's a famous person I'm like fuck like this is gonna make my commute terrible <laughs> Like I'm, I'm never like oh my god they're filming <laughs> this show here I can't wait I'm gonna take a photo I'm like, no, don't take a fucking photo because then they're going to think they could stay here and keep doing this. Like, they took over one of our bars. There's a bar in, in, in Bushwick that's completely closed down and only used as a set for TV shows now. Really? Yeah, I loved it. It was such a good place. But now they film all those stupid shows there. I'm like, fuck. And it's always on the worst, fuck, it's the worst street. <laughs> so no, when I meet, when I, when I have clients that are a little noteworthy, um, I don't treat them any different. Just because, I mean, you're still technically paying me for sex. Mm -hmm. And you're paying for a fantasy. And I'm going to treat you how you want me to treat you. And if you want me to fan fanboy over you, I will. But I'm probably going to mess up because you're not giving me enough notice to even mm -hmm. look up your music. And <laughs> it just happens. Wow. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you a whole bunch of nothing. I'm so no, sorry. No, no, please. It's Are just you kidding me? The nothing is just... That's like jerk off material. Okay. And just Especially like, for people who are, love that shit. I'm just, I always get curious because I'm always like, what's the big deal? Like we're living at a point where you can you, say you're gay and all so that stuff, but not apparently one, not. Yeah. Not one of my clients, but I heard a lot of stories about Neo, the, um, the R&B guy, the R&B singer. Yeah. The stories I hear about him with, with hookers and I'm like, oh, what? I was like, oh, I was like, oh, you signed an NDA. What a dumb bitch. I was mm. like, that one I would have. I would have fucking squealed on, but I mean, people technically are squealing and telling. Well, stories. yeah, they talk. People talk. Well, I mean, you're also gonna fucking slip up, especially Escorts if you're on talk. fuck escort. I mean, I've talked. We talk, we all talk about you, but we, but yeah, like, we're, not, we're not. We're also it's shop talk for us. It's like yeah. how you guys, everyone else, talks about. Yeah, like, like servers in yeah. the serving industry or uh, trainers and stuff. It's yeah. also how we protect ourselves. Like yeah. if there's a rich, famous person 
who is not nice, who tends to hurt people. Like, if you made my butthole bleed, I'm in a bad way and not mm. a good way. I'm going to tell other hookers who look like me because I know he's going to hire someone who looks like me. Mm-hmm. So it's mostly for our protection, but also because it's all we have to talk about. So it's like, oh. But yeah, no, I'll treat them exactly the same. Have you ever, and I'm sure it's happened, but have you ever had an escort uh, or a friend have somebody that you were like, oh, wow, what? Really? Him? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Um, not, not even like in a way of like Stan or anything? Well, no. Just For me, um, I was in Florida um, and uh, a friend of mine, a really good friend of mine, was their first time escorting and they landed, you know, pretty big deal. I was like, no fucking way. I was like, wife and kids. I was like, famous forever and he likes 19 year old boys. Mm. Go figure. Yeah. I mean, oh, shock. Rich old white guy, <laughs> but loves 19 year old boys. <laughs> get it. Yeah. Make all that money. Make sure you get, if you sign that NDA, make sure. Yeah. <laughs> make sure it pick, work it. Yeah. yeah. I feel like, you know, we, we do talk, we tend to, I, I like this one because we're, we're talking about escorts yeah. and escort stories. And I think those are very important. Well, they're becoming, well, they're becoming, it's becoming decriminalized in most states. Like I think New York's decriminalizing mm-hmm. it now. Um, Vegas decriminalized, I think, Massachusetts, I believe. Yeah. Let's say people listen, or younger, 18-year-olds, 19-year-olds, God for, not God forbid, but, yeah. you know, a lot of times teenagers stumble start on young. stuff. What would you say protection-wise? I know you, you do reverse lookups and you're, 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 you take care of yourself. What are some of the things I'm, that you can so say? I'm not going to give this as a guide to people who are young. I'm just going to give this as a guide in general mm-hmm. to people who escort. Um, we, everyone does it for their own reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, whether or not you're feeling hopeless or, you know, you, you can't hold a regular job or, you know, you're sick and tired of working for other people and you want to work for yourself. Um, you always have to protect yourself. Um, so what I do is I always have a battle buddy. Um, I share my location on my phone with um, a, a person who I know I can trust. Um, and I always give them like a little emoji, like, so it's always quick. Mm-hmm. And especially like now with my watch, everything's a lot quicker. But um, so like if everything's okay, send like a positive looking emoji. If things are not okay, I send a negative looking emoji. I don't, I don't have enough time to type words mm-hmm. and they're already on my frequently used. So that's usually how I, and then they know to ping me. And like, if something happens, they know to come save me. I don't carry weapons just because that can be taken from me and be used against me either by the person or if something does happen, it can be, you know, you're always in the wrong if you're a hooker. So if a cop comes and, you know, something happened. Yeah. So I never carry weapons. Um, I'm capable of taking care of myself because I am a little bit on the bigger side. Or I was. Former Marine. Yeah, and I I have some training. Yeah. So I'm fine with that. But what I definitely suggest is always let someone know where you're going. Don't become another missing person. A lot of us go missing. Um, yeah, always share your location, have your battle buddy, try to vet your people before you meet them. I understand that's not always capable. You're not always capable of doing that, especially if you're doing a last minute client. I don't do a last minute clients, but I know a lot of people who do. Like they get hit up on rent men mm-hmm. and then they're expected to be bottom ready in 20 minutes and at the person's house. If you're safe and comfortable with doing that, do it. But um, I don't personally feel safe doing that. And I've been doing this for three years and I still don't feel safe just stopping and going to someone's house. Try to vet, pay for a reverse phone search. It's not that expensive. Mm-hmm. It's a subscription for like $3 a month. It's not that bad. Just at least knowing the person's like name or s- the name of the person who owns that cell phone is a big enough deal. And it's also in your internet search history, so if something happens, they can look it up that way. But <laughs> it's a, that's a lot of scary, a lot of negative. Yeah. Um, Escoring's fun. Um, you meet crazy people, but you also meet really fun people mm-hmm. and great people. And then you make a lot of, I have, I have a lot of lifelong friends from escorting and also don't get into drugs. Please that, try to, I was just about please, to ask, please don't, if a client ever offers you any drugs, don't do it. Even if it's weed, don't do their weed, have, do your own weed. Um, don't ever do math. Please don't do math. Mm. I don't want to lose any more friends. Yeah. I lose a lot of friends. And a lot of friends are dying from Coke right now because they're really, it's the tainted Coke. So it's like, Oh, everyone's like doing Coke from people they don't know. And then they end up dying. So 
just you know, take a, like a month off from hard drugs. You can do a little reset. Yeah, you'll be better when nice you go cleanse. back. On. Yeah, you'll be better when you go back onto it. Just you know, wait till things are better, <laughs> please. I don't want to go to any more funerals. Yeah, it's been a rough year. It has been. Twenty twenty is not not the best. Twenty 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 one. Oh god, we're going into two years now. It's gonna be twenty twenty two soon. Yeah, I feel like Let's it's just. Just reset. We don't need no hard drugs. Yeah. Let's hope for the next time we will have uh, better news. Yes, please. When it comes to uh, cultural, worldly things going on. Yeah. Um, when people want to find you, um, where are they so going? So I'm, I use Instagram mostly. Um, so at TankerBear88, I know it's not Atlas Grant, it's TankerBear88. Um, or if you want to see me on Twitter and see some Triple X content for free, um, on Twitter it's um, at Atlas underscore Grant XXX. And there's like, I post funny memes. You do. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, so I'm most active on, t- on Instagram. I'm going to try TikTok, and it's Atlas Grant on TikTok, but um, I'm going to try it. But yeah, if you want to reach out, I talk to everybody on Instagram. So if you send me a message, it might take me like a couple, like a day, two days. But I will, I try to answer everybody as much as possible. Mm-hmm. And I try to, you know, I mean, most people ask me really in-depth questions. So I have to like, whoa, I just sit down and like. And think about it for a like, second. Like, oh shit, why are you asking me that? <laughs> <laughs> like, did I do that? <laughs> um, what about? Uh, oh, OnlyFans is um, OnlyFans XXX. I mean, OnlyFans. Atlas Grant backslash Atlas Grant XXX or okay. something like that or Atlas Grant, it's it's in my 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 link tree on my Instagram. On my Instagram. You do have a link tree, yes. Yes. Well, no, just because I feel s- I'm I'm not good. I'm not good with <laughs> social media. I'm old. I'm 33. <laughs> that is not old. I'm please. 33. 33. Come on. I feel like I was like I remember when computers were invented. I was like <laughs> I was like oh the cell phone. It was like back in my day. Like your kids now are like, oh, like why do you, why do you have a like a house why do you phone? have a flip phone? I was like, why? <laughs> well, my my boyfriend loves his sidekick, so he still has a sidekick. He doesn't use it, but he has it for like relic. Mm. But like, I still have like a landline. Like really, at, at your not, new not, not not at my new place. So I, have, I still have access to my parent, my family house in Williamsburg. Um, but there's like a landline there, and I remember that phone number, and that's the phone number I give people. You'll never forget that. No. But I'm like, I had that. I grew up with that. I had to remember my phone numbers growing up. Well, so, yeah. Well, you'll never forget it. I still no. remember my phone number. I remember everyone's phone number in my family and my my, my first friends. Something in 2004, 2005, that's when I started forgetting everybody's numbers. Yeah. Well, there you have it. Um, so good seeing everyone. Yeah, thank you. you. Thank you so much. It's I appreciate so it. I know it has. Um, we'll be shooting a little more mm. now that you're back in. We didn't We didn't speak. Well, no, you did take a break, but now you're back. Yeah. You're doing a couple things. and I'm trying. I'm testing the waters to see if I'm still porn worthy and if I'm still like being received well and like whether or not people even want to watch it. So it's like... People we'll want to watch it. I don't know. I mean, I'm also... One guy told me, he's like 19. He's like, he said he grew up watching me. You're at that stage now. <laughs> but but wait, you've you've been doing it for what? 4 years now? 4 it's Okay, gonna, we'll it's think about go it. like 5 years. So yeah, he was like 15. Okay, so. so yeah. So he did technically grow up watching you, but that doesn't uh, I mean, it's panic attack. I was well, like, I'm 33. Yeah. There are people now that are 23 that no wait, 23, 28, maybe 29 that were watching stuff I did in 2007, 2008. And I, it's I like, was watching it too, but. Wow, because that's very different because that means a whole generation's grown up watching that. So everything that we do has an effect. We don't feel it because we're doing it. I still feel like I'm new. Yeah, you're... Like, because I'm looking, I'm like, oh, Rocco. Are, for me, I'm like Rocco Steele, Brad Calvo, you know, Carlo Masi, Adam Champ, like all those people. Those are icons and they've been doing... Like, I grew up watching them. But That's then, funny, but though. I'm trying to I did think. one of Rocco's first scenes. That's my dear. Isn't that crazy? I love him. <laughs> He's such a good guy. He is. He's he, a good guy. He always looks out for me. Like, I want him on the podcast. That might that might be difficult. I've um, I've asked him. He doesn't want to talk about anything porn related. But I told him we traveled, talk a little bit about porn, and then everything else is. He travel so he, d- in his defense, he travels a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, he's never in a city for more than like a week or two. Um, but he's based in New York. Kind, like kind of. I don't know. Like, maybe. Mm. I don't even know how to say where he's based out yeah, of because we'll he's never yeah. there. He's um like. He was in Italy for like months, and then he was in Ohio. I mm-hmm. did a, his anniver- his twenty fifth anniversary or twentieth anniversary of him coming out was in Ohio. So he had an event there, and we were there for a while. He wasn't even there for more than a week. He said hi to his family, and then 
you know, went or, off to like yeah. Malta. Do we? Yeah. I was like, bitch, go to Malta. So yeah, um, everybody, Atlas Grant, uh, you know where to find him. Uh, my name is Ike Grande, and uh, we are on Spotify. We are on YouTube. Every single podcast directory. Listen. Yeah, listen. Keep listening. Um, we want to give get, you more interesting stories. Yeah, and they're just going to get better and better. And I've been launching a whole bunch of stuff, like little videos and stuff that I'm working on. I'm researching. I'm, I've been reading so much uh, because there's videos on poppers. There's videos on the history. I'm, I'm going to try and get into the history of gay porn this season. And... Um, uh, you yeah. talk about like the black and white era. Oh, they do the yeah. cake videos. Well, that there's uh, a lot of directors that I spoke to. I spoke to Bruce LeBruce not just uh, not too long ago. That's fun. So you guys know where to find me. Atlas Grant, Ike Grande. If you've watched gay porn, we've definitely helped you get off. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers.